Hi, welcome to Flight Line Down Under. Today we're reviewing the Hobby King Kinetic. Overall, this is a good little plane. It's um, pretty cheap and it comes with motor, speedy, servos fitted, everything. Um, so, not bad. Alright, let's go through a few bits and pieces and then you can see how it goes together and flies. Uh, starting with a few negatives. Um, the rudder on this thing is pretty ineffective. Uh, after about a third or fourth flight, I noticed the rudder servo uh, failed and I couldn't care less. This is a bank and yang plane, forget about the rudder. Uh, I've read other reviews where they rave on and on about the all flying stabilator. Um, my opinion is the elevator response is good and the stabilator is a non event. I couldn't care less whether it was a elevator and tail plane or stabilizer. The only thing that annoyed me about the stabilizer, of course, is it's much harder to tell when you've got the thing level when you're setting up your radio. Okay, the other thing that alarmed me horribly on the first few flights until I realized what was happening is this. In flight, the wings bend up quite easily, but only a short amount. And what I realized was happening was these carbon, the wings clip in these carbon fiber wing spars go in and then there's a little gap of a millimeter or so between the top of the wingspan and a bit of plastic casing. The bend is the wings bending until the wing spar hits that gap, but after it hits that, hits that bit of hard plastic, but after it hits that, it's pretty rock solid. So I'm not worried about that. Um, the only thing on that note is just make sure you have got your wings uh, plugged in properly. Um, didn't appreciate this, I don't know if you can see it, but the elevator is at an angle to the wing. Although I must admit in flying, because it is a bit of a bank and yank plane, I didn't really notice that. Uh, inside, you do not have a lot of room. So you've got to be careful and you've got to think a bit in terms of fitting your receiver and your battery. Um, make sure with your receiver that you've got your area oriented the, the right way and not bent around or something. That was probably the most difficult part of putting the thing together, was actually fitting the receiver. Uh, Hobby King say you use a 2S battery, I used a 3S, uh, because on the forums everyone says 3S, it goes like a rocket ship and it pretty much does. If you do fly on a 3S, give it a few minutes between flights to cool down, there's not a lot of ventilation in there. I mean, they've done their best. There's an air vent in the top of the propeller spinner, but what else can you do on a plane like this? Um, on a 2S, I would assume, actually, no problem there. Lots of people in other reviews have talked about the fact that it comes with a 30 amp speedy and it's way too big. Um, some have even suggested you swap it out. I think Hobby King knew exactly what they were doing. The advantage of a 30 amp speedy is the motor only pulls about 10 or 12 amps so the speedy's just ticking over and therefore won't get hot. I think they purposely used a big speedy to keep the temperature down and that part of things works beautifully. Leave the speedy where it is. When you're arming the thing it won't arm, the speed controller won't arm unless you've got the throttle trim all the way down. Um, that had me going for a little while. The instructions are just one big a3 sheet of paper with an exploded diagram and a list of parts. Seems a bit minimal, but actually it is a bit minimal in terms of putting it together, so that's all you need. The nice thing about the exploded diagram is if you ever have to replace anything, you can see where everything goes. It does go together very easily and simply, and you'll see that in the video. Um, it's a nice, simple sort of hat plane to chuck around. Uh, it does speed up. If you go full throttle, on a 3S battery I do most of my flights on about half throttle. Um, it turns on a dime and it's just a good little simple park flyer. Alright, let's go have a look at how it goes together and how it flies. Okay, so here's the stickers that you get with it. Uh, it comes in a plain box like all Hobby King stuff, which is good because you're not wasting money on uh, photos and packing that you're just going to chuck in a bin. Fiberglass rods down the side of the fuselage really do stiffen that fuselage up. It's quite an amazing effect they have. Okay, here's the wing with the servo pre-installed and the lead uh, inserted into the wing. Uh, 
carbon foam wings bar as well. You can also see there's a servo cover there. I uh, was very impressed with the, um, the fittings, uh, they're very good quality. There's the two halves of the all flying stabilator. You can see how it just pushes through and clips together. Nice thing was this lightweight Y connector. Uh, also, that's a, a hex key uh, sort of screwdriver thing, which I thought was uh, thoughtful. Okay, so you just poke the servo lead through a hole in the fuselage, slip the wing in until it um, clips in the internal plastic casing, and that's it for the wing. Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, those stickers are a bit of a trauma to put on, uh, so they can see the wings put in. Um, they're actually good quality stickers, but you know, if you look at those wing tips and the fuselage, you've got quite a few compound curves, so it's quite tricky to get on. You can sort of peel and unpeel them a bit, and that helps a lot. Uh, but I might have overdone that because mine is starting to come off a bit. A little bit of glue, I can probably fix that up. So here we see the second wing going on. Uh, fairly straightforward process. And being clipped into place. Okay, and that's, you know, a big chunk of the assembly done. You know, all your servos, everything's already pre-done, so it really is just stick the wings on and stick the tail plate on. And now we're just connecting the lightweight Y connector. I guess you could do with that, out that, and just use one of the extra channels on your receiver and program your transmitter. But I decided to go for the Y connector. on one side and clips in on the other. The only confusing bit is knowing which way up. I put the clips at the bottom. Uh, the exploded diagram doesn't really show you that amount of detail. I don't actually think it really matters because the airfoil section of the entire plane is symmetrical. Uh, clips on fairly easily and uh, as long as everything's flat and then you've got everything on the way. Okay, that's pretty much it other than installing the receiver and battery. Okay, so here we go. Uh, hand launch at full throttle and it's away pretty easily. Uh, this is flying at full throttle now. Um, and you'll see in a minute I, I cut back to half throttle and pretty much leave it there for the rest of the flight. Um, fairly straightforward stuff. Notice the fake stall turn by coming up at an angle instead of straight up because you won't be able to do it with the runner, that's for sure. But you know, rolls, loops, that sort of thing, all fine. I haven't flown mine in high winds, but I have seen one flown by another club member in about 15 knots. So obviously they can handle quite a bit of wind. Uh, but basically, uh, bank and yank and lots of fun. Um, the only other issue is when you're landing, you need to allow a bit of room because the thing just glides forever. But um, with a bit of practice, that's not a problem. Just for your first few landings, be prepared to go around. Uh, that's about it, really. Enjoy the rest of the flying, um, and you see what you think. Bye for now.